Al Jazeera correspondent Yumna Sayed is live in southern Gaza in Khan Yunus. Describe to us, Yumna, what's happening where you are. Well, I'm here in Khan Yunus in Nasser Hospital, where uh, basically all uh, the journalists are, and we were asked to evacuate uh, Gaza and the northern Gaza Strip to the south. Now, the bombardments in the south, I'm talking about Khan Yunus and Rafah, have still uh, have still been ongoing all through the night, the early hours of dawn and the early hours of this morning. And even until just a while ago, the bombardments were very close here to the uh, area around and surrounding this hospital. We could hear uh, the pounding of airstrikes around us here. while. This hospital remains packed with thousands of people who have come to take refuge in the yards of the hospital. The uh, situation in the hospital is uh, extremely uh, difficult. Uh, people are mainly struggling to get water. Drinking water in the entire strip has been uh, uh, in a continuous shortage for the past few days while uh, it keeps on getting worse and worse uh, to get water to drink for many, many people here in this area. Yumna, I understand that you have a guest with you, the head of Nasser Hospital's emergency department. We'd love to hear what he has to say and what the conditions are inside the hospital. Yes, exactly. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammed Qandil, he is the director of a Nasser Hospital, uh, director of the emergency department in a Nasser Hospital, and he will tell us exactly how the situation inside the hospital is. Yeah, <clears throat> the situation is catastrophic. For the last seven days, we have a continuous flow of severely wounded patients. The hospital uh, beds were expanded many times, though it's fully packed now. In the last hour, if I'm talking about the last hour, we received around 60 severely wounded patients, means one patient per minute. And this is very catastrophic situation. The health system will, will, will yes. Dr. Mohammed, tell me about the shortages of medical uh, equipment and medication and fuel. How is the hospital running these hours? The hospital now working in the last hours, I think. If electricity is still off, the hospital fuel-based generator will be off. The hospital, the whole cell system will collapse. We will not, if there is no electricity in the hospital, we cannot provide any medical services for our patients. The hospital will change to big grave for Surrey. And now, at this moment, there is many parts of the hospital without water. There is no water in... Uh, woman hospital in pediatric hospital <clears throat> there is no water and the engineer sector engineering sector trying to fix this the disaster is what because there is cut of water electricity for the last seven days and uh, nothing come from outside there is no medical aid no support no uh, medical uh, teams came to help us and the number of patients is very huge. Tell me about these tents that I see everywhere in the yards of the hospital. These white tents, what are they and wh who do they have? Yeah, because the hospital are fully back, the ICU beds are fully back, this tent will receive the patient in the next few hours. We don't have another choice. In previous escalation, we were used to send patients outside to near countries, so this will help a little bit with the crowding. This escalation, the number of wounded patients are very, very huge, and the hospital cannot compensate such number. Imagine the last hour we received around 60 civil wounded patients. Most of them are children and women. I didn't see any adult male. All of them are kids. The oldest was 11 years old. I saw a pregnant woman with severe injuries. The heart-breaking points here today, actually, is we were selecting between patients, which one we can help him which one we cannot help him because we don't have uh, enough beds in the hospital. And this is very, very uh, sad point. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Yes, back to you. Uh, that's so, Yumna you El Sayed reporting discreet. from Khan Yunus in uh, southern Gaza. Yumna, we were listening very intently to what your guest was saying, and he's saying they already are in a position where they have to select among patients, those they can treat and those that they believe they cannot.